Hi, I'm Ed Sproing. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Rambus today with Ely Cern, who's going to talk today about DDR4 and some of the problems that that's causing, particularly in the server and enterprise space. So, Ely, what are we starting to deal with now in the DDR4 space that was different than, say, DDR3, and particularly as, as this, the performance and the power become much more important inside the uh, cloud and the enterprise? Yeah, so we're seeing, <clears throat> if we start at the very top level, we're seeing significant shifts, uh, fundamental shifts in applications and how data is being processed and used, I think. Um, you know, big data, uh, all the data pouring in to the server and data center today is, is, is growing exponentially. And the need to do real-time processing of that data is significant, and you're starting to see real uptake in both the way these compute systems are designed, the processor demands on memory are significantly growing. And now you're seeing memory systems, um, the demands on translating to memory demands on capacity and bandwidth directly um, are driving these really increased technical challenges for the DDR4 system. So DDR4 um, was designed to start at 2133. It was introduced last year. Um, and it is designed to go all the way up to 3.2 gigabits per second. And you'll see the steady cadence over the next several years of the speeds increasing every year. And it gets harder each time that you move from, from 2133 to the next rung up there, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, you know, unlike the past, um, and if you look at the DDR4 channel, you know, it really, its fundamental topology and structure has not changed in decades. I mean, if you look at it fundamentally, it's a, you've got a CPU here, and you've got multiple modules that need to be installed on this channel. Let's call it three DIMMs. This representing one memory channel. And <clears throat> what you have here is a very wide 72-bit bus. That's the data bus. And you've got uh, a side channel here for control. And this control is a multi-drop control that goes like this. OK? This fundamental kind of topology, this matrix topology, if you squint at it, is really the same topology that was introduced way back in the 90s uh, with SDRAM, synchronous matrix type topology. And every generation, SDRAM, DDR2, DDR3, and then now DDR4, has been iterating on this basic matrix topology. And the thing, the nature of this nature topology, it is multi-drop. Um, there are multiple electrical drops on every load. Um, as many people know in this space, you know, this, every data line actually drops here, here, and here. That's three electrical loads. And in addition to that, uh, with certain types of memory types, there are multiple loads within the module itself. So in some cases, there are two drops here, loads on each. So in a three-module system, you'd have up to six electrical loads. And, you know, as you know, the more loads on a channel, the harder it is to run fast. So signaling and toggling the signal fast with lots of loads is a fundamental electrical physical challenge. What we're seeing in DDR4 in the, in the speeds between 2 and 3 gigabits per second is you're going to start to see it reaching its fundamental electrical limit. You know? So right now, today, we have DDR4 shipping with three modules per channel. Pretty soon, to run faster, you're not going to be able to run this one anymore. You're going to have to drop to two modules per channel. And eventually, two modules per channel will reach its electrical load limit. And then you're going to be forced to go to point to point with one module. And so, you know, this matrix topology has been running for a while, is starting to run out of gas. And this fundamental challenge makes it a very interesting time for us to enter this space. We're focusing on interface chips that will help run the system faster. And as the challenge really increases, we're able to really take the technology and expertise we've had and to make a very robust product for the DDR4 timeframe. And we think even contribute going forwards beyond DDR4. So what comes next? How do we solve the problem that you're dealing with here of, of eliminating these channels as you go? Well, um, to get into some of the meat of it, um, because of this multi-drop environment, there are lots of different factors that are limiting speed. There's um, electrical loading, uh, capacitance loading, inductive loading. Uh, there is crosstalk. 
Um, there is SSO noise, which is the switching noise on the chips that's just causing and there's all kinds of limits on this channel that are fundamentally reducing the eyes on these, on these channels and causing it much harder to run reliably. You know, in this space, in server data center, the requirements are very strict. Uh, there's a broad number of platforms out there. Um, there are very strict requirements to have robust design to ensure reliability across these systems. So the specs are very, very strict around this. And as you increase the speeds, all those fundamental electrical effects are coming into play. So, you know, a lot of those uh, techniques around making those eye margins larger sit inside these uh, interface chips. And we are very focused and tuned in using all the I.O. circuit tricks and SI analysis, signal integrity analysis, to ensure good margins uh, on this particular product. We see it as a real opportunity. Um, we are seeing that it's becoming more challenging for all the various players in this space to actually make robust designs. And so we feel it's a good time to enter. And it's also an architectural challenge as opposed to a, you're going to fix this with materials, you're going to fix this with uh, the next rev of something, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It is, a, it is going to be something that is challenging now. We're actually introducing our product. It's the RB26. Um, the 26 stands for 266 megabits per second. So our first product entering will be designed to run robustly at this speed. In fact, we've built in additional speed grade um, into the design itself. So we have extra margin and performance to be able to run robustly at 2666. We actually built in speed support for 2933. Um, so designing at this design point, which we expect systems to be entering the market several years from now ahead of the market, was a critical thing for us to be ahead. And we are designing and introducing the product uh, with the built-in I.O. support going forwards um, so that we actually feel like we're ready for the next generation of systems. It's important to point out, though, that when you're talking about margin, you're typically, margin for a lot of design engineers typically runs into, okay, we've added extra circuitry. For you, it's margin that, that involves uh, extra performance, right? Yeah. Yeah, it does. I mean, in fact, it's a combination of both. I think... Um, the I.O. circuits that run in these buffered chips um, need to be more sophisticated to then create the I margins that are needed to get this channel to run reliably. So, you know, um, outside of just the chip design, um, Rambus has had really takes a system approach to every design it makes. We, we do controller designs, phi designs, we do board designs, and we do chip designs. And in the development of this product, we did an end-to-end -end, um, system analysis, um, not just our chip itself, but in the context of the whole system. And that system design approach, I think, hopefully pays off well for the product because I think all of the circuits and the product features we put into this chipset are designed to run very robustly at the system level. Is reliability becoming more of a problem? I mean, this is particularly important in a enterprise environment where downtime could actually cost millions of dollars versus a cell phone where you may have to reboot. Right. It's a completely different world. So right. is that becoming a harder problem as we move down? Or Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think um, reliability uh, requirements, I think, are been very high and continue to increase. And I think that's clashing with this real desire to really drive much more compute bandwidth onto the system. Um, so the performance of the system has to go up, and the reliability has to be same or the better. So that's what makes it so interesting and challenging. And reliability goes in a lot of different ways. Reliability in a product, um, from a speed margin standpoint, is one aspect of reliability. The other reliability aspect is, for instance, in ESD and handling. I think these parts and modules get handled and manufactured uh, in various factories around the world. Uh, we built in, for instance, as an example, um, the example of enhanced standards, JETIC, uh, which we are fully compliant with as a standard, um, has certain reliability specifications around electrical handling. Uh, we've actually significantly exceeded that for our product because we've heard from our customers and their customers' customers that you know, electrical handling for reliability is critical. And then going forward, you'll see even greater reliability issues as DRAMs and memories start to see reach its scaling limits. You're going to see other types of reliability issues come into play. So yeah, reliability is a major 
challenge going forwards for the server industry. And, uh, you know, I think we're in a good spot to be able to contribute to all those. Okay. So looking out as, as this progresses, as we eventually maybe even move into DDR5, what sort of challenges are you facing? Yeah, so um, at a very high level, I don't, we don't see uh, the demand for bandwidth and capacity slowing down at all. I think it's going to continue beyond DDR4. I think we're going to see continued need for higher bandwidth and speeds um, and greater capacities as data sets get larger. So I think the industry and collectively us together as an industry are going to see some significant challenges to be able to meet the application need for greater bandwidth and capacity and reliability going forward, so even past DDR4. Um, so I think some of the things that we think about at Rambus and been thinking about for many years is, you know, how do we take uh, technologies and bring them into the marketplace, not just to solve those problems, but to really bring it in in a way that is really low risk, that is incrementally compatible and evolutionary to the existing standards, that make it easy to adopt, fit inside the cost framework of these systems, which are very cost sensitive. I think there are lots of ways to clean sheet of design to meet those needs, but I think one of the things that we really look forward to is figuring out the toughest challenge, which is not just to meet these requirements, but meet them in a way that is very adoptable to the ecosystem, and that is something that is really acceptable on a broad scale. So, you know, we really look forward to working with the industry to be able to collectively find solutions to this problem together. Yo, sir, thanks for a great explanation. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me.